How's it going everyone? Buck up in Cyclone Alley, far north Queensland, 1st of February 2024. You're probably thinking, Buck, what are you doing sitting in your shed with a generator sitting beside you? I took the plunge yesterday and I'm going to explain why. Now listen, you know how I go if you're new to the channel, I can waffle guys, I jibber jabber and my clips go too long. So what I'm going to do is do a series of shorter clips so you don't have to sit through my 45 minute marathons. What I'm gonna do is do a series of uh, shorter clips on the new angle generator I got from BCF yesterday or the day before. Okay, and uh, today, today's clip is just gonna be about why I went with this particular generator because I know all the Honda fanboys and the Yamaha fanboys out there be throwing shit at their computers now going, Buck, you should have got a Honda, you should have got a Yamaha, and there's going to be a lot of other people going, you should have got this brand, you should have got that, they're shit, buddy. You know how YouTube goes in the comment section. So I'm going to tell you now exactly why I went with this generator. So if you've been living under a rock, this year, you will notice, or you will notice that it's only the 1st of February, and we've had two cyclones already this year up here in North Queensland. The first one went just north of us, flooded our town here in Innisfail, just south of Keynes, if you're wondering where that is, and did a lot of damage, guys. A lot of damage, not so much from the wind, but from the tremendous amounts of rain it dropped. Um, place is still recovering. Highway up here from me, it's going to be closed for another six months at least. So they're still recovering from Cyclone Jasper. Okay. And then a couple of weeks after that, which is only just recently, Cyclone Kiralee. JK, and the next one's going to be Lincoln, which is forming up already. Kiralee came across just north of Townsville and did quite a bit of damage down there. The amount of people without power after both those cyclones has been incredible. Parts of Innisfail lost power. Luckily, where I am, we didn't. But there's still people without power a month later up north of Cairns, guys, because of the amount of damage that was done up there. Nearly 60,000 people in Townsville lost their power. My mate Pat only got his power on yesterday and relied on generator power after Cyclone Kiralee went across Townsville and did a little bit of damage, fair bit of damage, and it's now inland, dropping a hell of a lot of rain inland and causing a tremendous amount of flooding in northwest Queensland. Turn the news on this morning. Oh, beauty, there's another low forming in the Coral Sea, another potential cyclone. And if that one forms, it's going to be Cyclone Lincoln. So, three, it's the 1st of February, and we're staring down the barrel of our third cyclone for the year, guys. Uh, that's the joys of living in northern Australia. But it just seems to be this particular area here in far north Queensland, tropical coast, we just, they always seem to hone in around this area for some reason. A bit like the Pilbara region over in western Australia. Cyclone alleys on both sides of the country. So as you know, I do a lot of eclipse, guys, on my battery power stations and all that and I always run portable battery stations and one of the big reasons that I do that is I'm always thinking about post cyclone. In 2006 we got smacked hard by a high end category 4 cyclone here called Cyclone Larry and we were without power for over two weeks and it was scorching hot. Okay so Larry caused a tremendous amount of damage, the whole town was without power for at least two weeks. 2011, a Cat 5 hit this region. Once again, another couple of weeks without power. It might have been nudging three weeks, actually. So, at those times, I didn't have a generator. And let me tell you, it's quite miserable up here when you haven't got a ceiling fan on in the middle of summer. It is scorching hot at the moment. I'm sitting here sweating as I speak now. And when you don't have power and you don't have ceiling fans, it's very, very unpleasant. As you know, I always talk about having battery back, uh, battery power so that I can run some lighting, uh, charge up my Ryobi uh, 18 volt fans and all that type of stuff. And it works, it does the job guys. But you know what, after a cyclone, once the cyclone goes across, it doesn't just all of a sudden, nice sunny days again. You can have weeks of torrential rain after a cyclone passes over. 
we and it does happen. Uh, I remember after Larry and Yasi, it was just weeks of just wet weather, a lot of wet weather. You're getting the tail end of the cyclone, dropping a lot of rain down. So solar's no good to you then. So I finally taken the plunge and I thought, I'm still going to use my battery packs to run my camping fridges so we can keep our drinks and our milk and beers cold and that after a cyclone. I've got about three or four different camping fridges that I can run off my lithium battery power stations here. But sometimes if you haven't got solar, you can't charge them up guys. They don't last forever. The fridges suck the power out of them. You might get two or three days maybe, depending on, it, on how hot it is. And then you're going to have to get some power back into your yeah, your battery box is here. I've got one here, which is my portable one. I've got a portable one sitting in the back of the BT50. I've got a battery, a lithium battery in the camper trailer here that I might need to keep charged up uh, if I can't do it with solar. And I thought, I need to buy a little inverter generator. A little inverter generator that I can use around the shed. After a cyclone, I can still run a fridge maybe inside or whatever. I can take it camping if I need to. I could have done with this generator last year when I was when I had the caravan guys. We got a week of real rainy weather down near Mackay, and I had to just keep the BT plugged in and keep the BT idling to keep enough power up to my lithium battery because solar just wasn't doing the job. So these little inverter generators seem to be the go now. Now listen, I've been doing months of research and deliberation and everything, and you know what? In this first, I'm just going to explain in this clip why I went with an angle, and here's my reasoning, guys. Make sure you—I'm sure you'll put it down in the comment section whether you agree with me or not. I had my heart set on the little Honda EU22. That seems to be the the main one that's on the market now. A nice little uh, generator that's good for around the house and great for out camping charging up batteries and all that type of stuff. The little Honda EU22. Had my heart set on that one. The only thing that turned me off that generator was the cost. It's got Bluetooth, it does everything you need it to do. $2,349 for the little Honda EU22. It's, got, it's a 2.2 kVA, 2,200 watts, and it's got a rated capacity which doesn't mean it can run at 2,200 watts the whole time. It's got a rated capacity of 1,800 watts, I'm pretty sure, the little EU22. So it can run all day pumping out 1,800 watts. So you can't go using more than 1,800 watts on that generator or it'll cut out, okay? The other big boy on the block is Yamaha. Now, I don't think we have a Yamaha dealer for generators here in Innisfail. The closest one would have been Anaconda up in Cairns. And the Yamaha, I'll just go through some prices there for you. The 2.2 Yamaha, 2,195. And the 2.4 Yamaha, which is a, a bigger one, um, 2000, say $2,500 from Anaconda. Now, another big reason that was swaying my thing, I wanted to have a generator that one, I could buy locally. And two, if anything happened to it, I could sort it out locally. I didn't want to get a generator, Gentrax or something like this, one of these online generators and have problems with it and then go through the rigmarole of trying to get it sorted out on warranty, which is a lot harder when you do stuff online. Now there was another generator there that I was looking at that really uh, took my attention from the boys over at iTech World in Western Australia. It's called a Redback. And they had a Redback generator, a 3,500 watt generator, rated capacity to 3,000 watts, same size as this one here, and they had a really, really good price on it. You know what turned me off that one, guys? The 12 month warranty. I, I hadn't heard of the Redback generators before, and the thing that turned me off that was the only 12 month warranty. So as much as I wanted the little Honda EU22, which has got Bluetooth and all that. I, I must have watched every YouTube clip on YouTube on those little Hondas. And we've got a place here in Innisfail called The Watershed. And they're a Honda distributor. And I could have bought the Honda, little Honda generator from them. Got it serviced through them. Got spare parts through them. Got the warranty through them. But the thing, the only thing that turned me off was the price, $2,349 for a little Honda EU22. 
So I started looking in BCF, and I was talking to the manager at BCF, Shane, here in Innisfail, and he he talked up these angle generators quite a while to me, and I didn't really want a generator back then. Then I started having a look at the the angle generator. I thought, right, oh, the Yamaha, but then I've got to go to Keynes and deal through Anaconda and that. BCF here, we've got a BCF in town. They're a distributor for angle generators. Now, listen, we all know that one of the best camping fridges on the market in the world is Angle. And I don't think anyone will dispute me on that. Angle have got to be the best, if not one of the best camping fridges in the world. Just got a really, really good reputation. I've got a 40 litre Angle sitting in the back of the BT50. It is a brilliant little fridge. Malcolm Douglas, when he passed away, still had his original Angle fridge when he died. It was beaten up, it had dints in it, it was still going. He said, I've still got my original angle and it's still going. So we all know the reputation angle's got with fridges. Same company, guys. And they're also doing generators, okay? They, they haven't been around as long as Honda and Yamaha and that. But here it is here, the angle generator. And I thought, if the generators are as half as good as the fridges, it'll be a good thing. So why did I go with this one? As much as I wanted the little Honda. Well, as I said, the Honda is a 2,200 watt, 2.2 kVA, rated capacity 1,800. All right, so they're probably good for running an air conditioner when you're out camping or whatever, some lights maybe, and that's about it. This thing here, through BCF, at the BCF price, I got that yesterday for 1,389. 1,389 as opposed to 2,349 for a little Honda or 2195 for a Yamaha. A thousand dollars cheaper, guys, than the little Honda. I was narrowed down to a Honda or an Angle because I can get them both here in Innisfail and if I have problems with them, I can go back. I could have gone back to the watershed for the Honda. If I have any problems with this, I go back to BCF. Why did it, another reason I went with this, have a look on the box here. I think it's on the front of the box here. Four year warranty, that matches Yamaha and Honda. Angle have got a four year warranty on their generators and I thought that is really good peace of mind. Something goes wrong with this thing in four years, I take it back to BCF and they will send it to a, uh, an Angle uh, repair agency and there's one up in Cairns, okay? So if anything happens to this generator within four years, I'll take it into BCF, they'll get it up to Cairns and it'll be fixed under warranty through the local uh, angle bloke. He must fix angle generators and all that up in Cairns. So that's good peace of mind. I didn't want to have to go through the rigmarole of trying to chase warranty up through a company that I've dealt with online. I've been through that before. I don't want to do it again. One, I wanted to support local business here in town, the local Innisfail BCF, okay? And two, I've got good warranty on it. And three, if something goes wrong, I go back to BCF. And the other good thing too I like now is buying through companies like, it's good to buy through local, I like the Watershed, they're a local company here, do a fantastic job. They sell Honda, Honda quad bikes and anything Honda, water pumps, all that type of stuff. If I bought a Honda, I would have gone to my local place. I could have got a Honda EU22 online a bit cheaper than what the watershed's got them for. But I would have paid the extra and gone to the watershed because I know I'm supporting local and two, I get the warranty work done there as well. And if need be, I could have got the servicing done. This here, $1,000 cheaper. And this is a 2,500 watt generator. It is rated to 2,300 watts. So I can run this generator and it'll, it'll constantly put a maximum of 2,300 watts out, as opposed to the 1,800 watts on the little Honda generator. It was rated to 1,800, it's a 2.2. They can't run at 2.2 all day, guys, putting out 2,200 watts, depending on how much load you put on them. This thing here can spit out 2,300 watts uh, regularly, like just, it, it'll slam away and pump out 2,300 watts if that's what you ask of it. Whereas the other one, the little Honda, didn't have quite the output. So I've got a generator that's a little bit bigger, sure. One thing good about the Honda was the size. It was a really compact, great little generator for camping. It really was. 
So I've gone with the angle, guys. Four-year warranty, that was really good peace of mind. Any generator with a 12-month warranty, personally, I will stay clear of them. I, I just think if you're going to put four years on a generator, they must, they must think a lot of their product and they must know it's a good item to put four-year warranty and it matches Honda's warranty of four years as well. You, go to, go in, you don't have to worry about your receipt. If anything happens to this, I can go into BCF and tell them my name. They pull me up on the computer because I'm a club member and I've got club member price on this $13.89. It was $14.40 or whatever. If you're a club member, it doesn't cost anything to join. Get a little BCF card and you get for $13.89. Thousand dollars, nearly a thousand dollars cheaper, and I've got more output on this one than I would have had on the Honda. Two thousand three hundred watts uh, rated capacity, so it can run a bit more gear. In other words, now you know I'm going to use it to charge stuff up around the shed after a cyclone. Keep my batteries charged. The other reason I went with a two point five angle also do a two. 2,000 watt generator, a 2,500 watt, I went in the middle of the range. They also do a bigger 3,500 watt. Now, my electrician is gonna come out in the near future and I'm gonna see about getting uh, a generator plug so that after a cyclone, I can plug a generator in, in there and power some stuff in the house. Now I know a lot of you out there going, Buck, you need a bigger generator than a 2,500 watt generator to run your house. I am well aware of that, guys. I will not be able to run my whole house on this. What I do, or I'm hoping to do, is at least run the ceiling fans during the day and maybe the, the main kitchen fridge or whatever, okay? I've got another item on the way. I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag yet, that this is gonna work hand in hand with the angle generator. I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag. I've got an item on the way that's gonna work hand in hand with this, but this has certainly got its place around the house. If I get that generator plug on during the day, I can plug this in using the 15 amp lead, and I can at least run the ceiling fans. At least we can go in the house. Without ceiling fans, you can't be in the house in summer up here. It's too hot, you're better off coming out into the yard. So, I've got the electrician looking into a thing, and down the track, I will actually do some testing on this. I'll actually plug, if I get that plug put in, I'll run this generator and we'll see what we can run in the house off the 2000 watts. So that'll be in some future videos, guys. So I've got a lot of good stuff coming up on this, this generator here. Listen, BCF had another one there, an XTM, a 2000 watt XTM, $599. A lot cheaper, but only a 12 month warranty. Listen, I think I've gone I think I've gone, rather than get a cheap no-name with a 12-month warranty, I've kind of gone middle of the road price-wise. They're $1,000, roughly a thousand bucks cheaper than the Emi or the, or the Honda, which are the two big boys on the block. We know how, well, they're fantastic generators, don't get me wrong. This thing here was more affordable for me. It still had the four-year warranty. That's why I went with the angle. And that is one of the main reasons I did it. The price, I can get it. Like buy it locally, I can get the warranty sorted out locally, and I've got a four year warranty on there. And as I said, the price was good. $13.89 for a 2,500 watt generator, I think is a very, very good price considering the, the cost of Honda and uh, Yamaha generators. So there you go. I said I'd keep it nice and short. The next clip's gonna be me unboxing this. I'll actually get it out, I'll show you what it comes with. Uh, we'll talk about what kind of oil you have to do in there and then we'll give, do a talk through and show you all the features of the generator and then probably in the third clip I'll show you the starting procedures and then what I'm going to do is run the generator in and I'll probably crank up one of my camping fridges and we'll run it in. So I'm going to do some short series of uh, one. This is just the first one to explain because I know I'm going to get a lot of people in the comment section go, Buck, why didn't you buy a Honda? Why didn't you buy a Yamaha? Why didn't you get a three and a half? Whatever. The good thing about this one, it's big enough for me to throw in that camper trailer. If I want to go free camping for a couple of weeks and I think I might get some rain or the solar's not going to do the job, this is still small enough, and you'll see it when I unbox it, to put in the camper trailer and take camping with me. If I was only looking at a generator, 
to power stuff in the house through the, the plug on the power box, which I'm getting put in by the Sparky, I probably would have gone the angle 3,500 watt. And I know my mate Russ Longson from the Townsville Chiefs, uh, he's getting one hooked up at his house, and I'm pretty sure Russ is going to get the 3,500 watt because it's not something he wants to take camping. He mainly wants it. Uh, Russ just lost power, and his parents and that lost power after Cyclone Kira Lee uh, down in Townsville. And <laughs> there's a lot of people in Townsville. As I said, over 55,000 people in Townsville just lost power. And when I originally went in to buy one of these from BCF, they said, mate, we're out. I went up to Cairns to get one, sold out. They said we had to send them all to Townsville, BCF in Townsville. Everyone was asking for generators. So I know for a fact, BCF has sold out of all their angle generators. Put my name down at the local BCF. They rang me the other day and said, Buck, uh, we just had two come in. Uh, I had one earmarked for me. So here it is, $1,389 for a 2,500 watt generator. There's my reasoning why I bought an angle. Well-known brand, good warranty, and a good price, and I can get it, I got it locally, supporting a local business here, our local BCF in Innisfail, and um, what was the other reason I got it? I can't remember now, there was a lot of good reasons I got the angle. Yeah, would have been good to have a little Honda. They're expensive guys, but you pay for what you get. And this thing here, I thought, four year warranty, it's as good as Honda's warranty, it'll do me. Let me know what you reckon down in the comments section. I've already got a lot of good comments uh, I just put a, a still photo up on Facebook. Have had a lot of people uh, say that they've got an angle generator and that they're very good. I've had a couple of people say that they've had problem with theirs. Like anything mechanical, it can fail on you. But we'll soon find out, won't we? I'm gonna put it through its paces. As I said, anything goes wrong in the next four years, I just go into BCF and say, my angle generator's got a problem and they'll probably say, Buck, next time you're up in Cairns, drop it into this uh, repair agency. I go up to Keynes every couple of weeks anyway, and um, it'll all be fixed under warranty, which is good peace of mind for four years, matches Honda's warranty. Righto, next clip, we're gonna unbox, and we're gonna go through uh, through the book, tell you all about the um, uh, statistics on it, and uh, its outlet, and all that type of stuff, show you over the front, what it can do, what all the switches do, and all that, and then probably in the third clip, We'll actually put the oil in and we'll crank her up, eh? Thanks for watching. Let me know what you reckon down in the comment section. I don't know, I'm feeling confident. I think I've, I've done the right thing. I think it's gonna be a good generator and I think I've gone a good choice going middle of the range with the 2,500 watt. And as I said, in future clips, when I get that power board in on the, the house and that, we'll actually see what it can do, eh? But at the moment, I can't do that. I'm still waiting for the electrician to uh, set up that bloody generator plug on my power box. See you guys. Take care, be good to each other. Catch on the next one.